Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zimbul. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling I'll take you through a couple things new in Zim 7.3.2. Woohoo! So one thing is a title bar here on a window. So this is a window, and here's a title bar, and you can close it, and you can open it again. So I'll show you that one, and also we're doing some uh, some noise art, and while we were doing some noise art, there were a couple things that we wanted to be able to do. Uh, one with colors, and I can't remember the other one, but we'll get to it when we see it. Okay, so let's dig into some code then and see how these things are uh, being operated. All right, so first of all, the window. Do -do -do -do. Here we have Zim 7.3.2. And we have a window, so a new window. And we've added a title bar of title bar, or whatever you want to call it. That's a string or a label. And then title bar coloring. If you don't do the title bar coloring, then it looks like this. Refresh there. So it's sort of a transparent uh, title. Let's just make this a little bit smaller for us too. There you can also adjust the height, at which point you may need to adjust the, the font as well. So you can make that quite big, 60. Um, there, at which point you would want to adjust the font size. So if you want to adjust the font size, it's a new label in here, label. And you can go size, if we can type it, we can do it. Size 40 maybe, and text for that label will be back to the title bar. Oops, we got rid of the round bracket on the back of that there. There's a bigger title bar, and of course, if you want to go in with the color, um, you could say red. Now, new to Zim recently are these colors, so we don't have to say frame.red anymore to get a, a Zim red color. Uh, there you go, and if we adjust the bar color, title bar, how about, I don't know, pink would look good, probably not. Uh, oh yes, do you like that? So you can see that there's, and then we can move to corners as well, so corner of 30, then uh, we start to, to look like that. Let's change that to a white. And how's it doing now? Pretty good. Okay, so uh, very customizable now in terms of the, the bar. And once again, that's the window below, which can hold all sorts of content. The idea behind a window is that it holds content that you can't fit in a normal screen. Otherwise, you could use a pane or just put it on the screen. So uh, it will provide the scroll bars. Now, the scroll bars used to be called indicators, so that's something else to look at here in what's bubbling. So you can adjust a variety of things with the scroll bars. Uh, it used to be called indicators, the parameters, but they've all been adjusted to be scroll bar this, scroll bar that, scroll bar the other thing. One thing you can do is now limit the bar H and bar V by default. They'll be true. And so if you don't want, uh, right now, you can see that there's a horizontal bar. Uh, what do we just limit? I can't remember. But now we've only got the vertical bar. You can't scroll horizontally. So before that, you couldn't do that, but now you can. So that's nice. And uh, those are customizable as well with the scroll bar property. So uh, your window W here, W dot scroll bar dot and then there's a whole bunch of things so you can change those to to look like whatever you want we've done that before various things just uh, read the docs on that so that's some new stuff with the window now the pane is also similar the pane ha has had a title bar but it was just called bar and because the same thing the title bar is being used here in the window. We called it bar to start, and then we, we changed the indicator to scroll bar, and then we had a bar and a scroll bar, and it was like, ah. So now we've adjusted that to a title bar, 
uh, to distinguish it from a scroll bar. So there's a title bar and scroll bar and now pane which used to have just a bar we've adjusted that to be the same. So if you take a look at the changes like like always you can go to the Zim site take a look at the changes and it will tell you any parameter name changes that we've made to keep things consistent. All right so now we've got a pane showing up and there it is. So the pane has always had a bar or for a long time has had a bar anyway and we just sort of realized that hey wait a minute we should put one of these things on a window as well and so we did the reason that window is coming back by the way is that it's uh, dispatching a close event which we're capturing here on the window so w is our window window and window dot on close we're calling a timeout and then just adding the window back to the stage and updating the stage. So that's changes with windows. Let's take a look at this art now. Isn't it pretty? I will open that up in a browser. So this is noise and we can control the number of bumps. So let's make more bumps. More bumps. And we can also change the angle uh, or sorry the uh, curvature of that. So now these bumps are quite curvy and you get something that looks like that or not curvy at all and you get something that looks like that mountains and reduce the number of bumps to just uh, one or two there and how about we increase the curves a little bit Ooh, it's nice huh you can also stop it from cycling and only show one color at a time or pick your colors with the color picker. Now when we did this, when we present the noise, uh, we are presenting that color at a very low alpha and drawing those lines on there. The color picker does present, it does give you alpha, but it gives you a color first and then an alpha if you wanted an alpha picker. I didn't really want an alpha picker, I just wanted the colors, but I wanted them to automatically take on an alpha with RGBA. So let's go into the code now and take a look at how that was solved. Um, was there another thing? Oh yes, the other thing is quite often you either want a full-blown color picker that just pops up over everything and allows you to pick any color. That's the default Zim color picker. But Many times I'm just wanting a few colors like this, and any time I went to a few colors, it would show the gray picker with all the grays underneath, and it would show the alpha picker with the alphas, and it would show the button bar that shows the color that's selected. And when you only had a few of these colors like this, you didn't really need all that stuff. You had to turn all those things off in the parameters, and it just was a little embarrassing. So what we've done is if the color picker has only one row of colors, so not multiple rows of colors then by default all those things will be turned off and you'd have to go turn them on if you wanted so that was a another change in our recent zim 7.3.2 okay so we're here in art now uh, this is a little bit more complex because we're dealing with noise although we've simplified it a fair bit we're making a shape that we can draw our noise into. We are making a bitmap to do the blitting where we sort of write to the bitmap and then fade out the bitmap every once in a while. And here's the noise. Now noise has been around for a little bit, but once again we're going on this example. This example's up on CodePen. So you can check out the, uh, I think Dan Zen code pen put it, but Zim, I think, just uh, forked it. So you can probably find it on the Zim code pen as well. Or come on into our uh, Slack environment, our Slack channel, zimjs.com slash Slack. And it's there as one of the examples in the examples channel. We'd love to see you there. So noise has been around for a while, but this example once again tries to describe noise in a fairly simple way and allow you to kind of look through what's been uh, what's happening. But one of the things we needed to change was that when we get a Zim color, a Zim color looks like this. So I will just zog green, for instance. And let's take a look at that. Refresh and 
F12. That. So there's what green looks like. I, uh, you probably can't tell that, uh, see that very well. It's a number sign A, C, D, 2, 4, 1. Uh, there's also an HTML green, which is like that. And uh, that would just <laughs> zog the string green, though. Sorry, so when that's used in a place where a color goes, that green would also work. But recently, we've converted the frame.green to uh, also, it still works with frame.green, but we've converted that to right on the Zim object itself or namespace itself. So Zim.green exists. And if you don't need the Zim namespace, now we can just do that. So green exists as a number. But in that number, there is no alpha. So if we say make a rectangle green, we can then say rect.alp or rect.alpha equals 0.8 or rect.alp equals 0.8 and we can set the alpha that way. So what we want to do though is set the alpha of each line to uh, 0.2. That can be done by converting the color. So here's the color that comes from the color picker. If you want to see that, that's down here. Color picker. Picker is a new color picker. So there we are throwing our colors into the color picker, no longer needing to do the frame dots. And when we pick one of those, the color picker will tell us not green, but it will tell us whatever the hex number of that green is. And so what we're doing up here is we're taking the hex number of the green and we're converting it to RGBA and then passing in the alpha using the convert color. So we've reworked convert color. Prior, previously, convert color would just take an HTML color and convert it to a hex color, like number sign something 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 or it would take a number sign something 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 and convert it to an HTML word like red or green if that exists. So you can still do that if we take that selected color and uh, convert it to a string like that. We don't get the alpha in the end. So if we convert it to a string, it would try and take the hex color that's in here and convert it to uh, you know, color like violet or something which doesn't always work. For instance, the Zim colors do not have a matching HTML string, so you would get black out of that. So that's what it used to do. It used to cross-convert those things, but now we've added a third one, and that being RGBA. So now it works a little bit different. You always uh, put a color in here, and then you either specify hex, which is a default, or string, which is convert a hex to an HTML string or RGBA, at which point you have the chance to provide an alpha. And that gives us an RGBA that looks like this. Normally we would put in here, uh, like if I wanted white RGBA, well it's, yeah, okay, I guess it has to be white because I'm on a dark. That's unfortunately it's 255 comma 255 comma 255 for the red, green, and blue, and then say 0.2 or something like that. So that uh, ends as a string, and I don't want this anymore. Call it a dunk. That's how I would normally do. So this is forcing a white color. Refresh. And there it is with the, the alpha working there. So the problem is to get from a color picker to this, there was no way to really do that very easily. So we provided uh, just with some well, what's that place called? The evil place. Stack Overflow. <laughs> and we did a, a quick search on Stack Overflow to find out how to convert hex to RGBA. And now that little snip of code is in here. Wow, getting a deja vu. I think it was a deja vu from a time that we did a bubbling and said, hey, we should put in that type of converter so that we've got the alpha. <laughs> and now, here we are telling you, <laughs> in the what's bubbling. We have put in the converter so that we can get an RGBA. Super duper. I think that's a pretty good ending spot for a <laughs> what's bubbling in Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Have a great day. I'm also doing a series called uh, the Dan Zen Museum uh, Record, a record of the Dan Zen Museum. <laughs> And so that's what just flashed up there. But this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. So I uh, hope you made it this far, and we'll see you later. Ciao.